Today we're going to be talking about lerping. Very exciting. There's a lot of misconceptions on this subject. A lot of people have a lot of opinions on it, but I'm going to show you both the wrong way of doing it and the correct way of doing it and how they both have their pros and cons. On the Unity docs, lerp is represented by a, b, by t, where a equals the start value, b equals the end value, and t equals the interpolation value between two floats. So t is always a number between 0 and 1, and a and b can just be any number. Um, it's usually a is the min value and b is the max value. The closer t is to 0, the more it's going to return a. Closer to 1, the more it's going to return b. And if it equals 0 0.5, it will return the midpoint. And we can visualize this. So I have a equals negative 10, b equals 10, and the slider represents t, which is between 0 and 1. The more I slide it to 1, the more it equals 10. The more I slide it to 0, the more it equals negative 10. So now I'm going to show you the first method of lerping. In this script, we have a speed variable, a slider, a game object that just turns on once the slider is completed, and some text to visually show us the current value. With it, we have a start lerp function, which just starts the coroutine. This is attached to a button. And in the coroutine, we set the complete signal to false, the slider value to the min value, and we create a while loop. So while the slider value does not equal the end value, we are going to lerp the slider value to the max value by time dot delta time times speed. Then we set the text value equal to the slider value. And once it's completed, we will enable the complete signal. And now I'm going to start this, and we can see it starts off pretty fast, but the closer to the end value it gets, the slower it gets. And now it's just like barely at a crawl. It's barely making numbers. It's going super slow here, right? And it's kind of like a rubber band where it starts really fast. It really snaps into position. But once it's near the end, it kind of just doesn't really doesn't really do anything. And this is kind of why people say not to use this method. But there's a way around that. We can use a threshold to check to see if it's close enough. And if it's close enough to the end value, uh, we'll, we'll just set it to complete. So in this new script, lerp method one with threshold, the only real difference is now we have a threshold equal to 0 0.001. And we're just checking to see while the slider value is less than the max value minus threshold, and once it's completed, we will set the slider value equal to the max value, or else it's just going to be stuck at that weird number we were at before. And uh, that's that's pretty much it. I'm going to show you guys a real uh, sneaky way of changing scripts. So if we go into debug mode and select this script, change it to the script we want, now we have all of our reference values without having to set them all back up again. When I hit start, it should just go right to one. Nice. So let's talk about how we would use this method. Um, this method is really, really good to use as a camera follower. I use this method in a game called Santa Slane, and when the player uses the jets, it creates this really cool effect where the player kind of like blasts off, but the camera kind of like holds back, and then it sort of like snaps too, and it really creates no extra work. I personally wouldn't use this method for really anything else other than following objects. It's really, really good at following objects. So now let's talk about method two. Uh, method two basically guarantees that it's going to reach that endpoint in X seconds, right? So if I wanted to get there in two seconds or three seconds, doesn't matter. It's going to get there in X seconds. So again, same kind of script going on, but the only difference is we're going to save the elapsed time as well as save the interval value. Um, this isn't needed, it just makes it a little bit cleaner. And then instead of multiplying by time dot delta time, we add time dot delta time to the elapsed time, and then we set the interval equal to elapsed time divided by speed. We then set the slider value equal to the lerp between min value, max value by the interval. And that's pretty much it. So now I'm going to switch it to method two, and you'll see it's going to go from zero to one in one second. Awesome.
And lerping doesn't just work with float values, we can also make it work with colors or positions and rotations. Rotations actually have a fun one, an exclusive, it's called a slurp, which is just a spherical lerp. I have this color example. And just like our other example, it's going to lerp it between a white color to a green color. So let's say you want the easing from method one lerping, but you want it to complete in X seconds from method two lerping. We can accomplish that by using an animation curve. Very, very similar to our other script, but instead of speed, we just have the animation curve and the time to complete is going to be dictated by the animation curve. And down here, the slider value is going to equal to the anim curve dot evaluate by the interval. And we can see what the value is going to equal to. So if we go to our animation curve within the editor, we're gonna see it's going to kind of ease into it. And then near the end, it's going to ease out. Nice. And we can get really spunky with this too. So if I added a bunch of curves here and I was just like, hey, I wanted to go do something really weird. I just want to bounce up and down. Uh, we can do that too. <laughs> yeah, super weird, but you know, you can do a lot with animation curves. Now let's get into inverse lerp. It's a little bit different. It's the opposite. So instead of inserting a number between zero and one, it's going to give you a number between zero and one. So going back to the Unity docs, uh, we can see that A is the start value, B is the end value, and T is going to be the value between start value and end value. And I have an example that's just going to show this to us quick. We have a vector two, a min max value that is between zero and 50, and the interval is going to be at 25. So bang on in the middle. If we inverse lerp this, this is going to give us a log of 0 0.5. We're going to attach the script to this game object and just start it. And we're going to see in the log what it's going to give us. And yep, 0 0.5. And again, I can just set this to, let's say I'm going to set it to 2.9. And now it's going to give us 0 0.058. My next example, we can kind of assume this is like player distance, right? So the min value is 365. The max value is 1,500. The closer this slider gets to the end value, the more it's going to change this image's scale and color. This inverted lerp variable is going to equal to the inverse lerp of the slider min value, slider max value by the slider current value. We then get a number between zero and one. We can use that to set the scale of the image by the min scale, max scale, by the inverted lerp value, and just multiplying it by vector 3.1. And again, like our color example, we can lerp it by the min color, max color, by the inverted lerp value. And we can see that happening right now. The closer we get, the bigger it gets. The further away it gets, the smaller it gets. So that's the inverse lerp. It's super useful. And two examples I like using inverse lerping for is scaling in-game UI objects based on player distance. Um, you can make it so that you can scale it bigger when the player is super far away or scale it smaller when the player is super close. Um, another really good way of using inverse lerping is by creating player near death effects. You know, in some games where the player is almost dead, the screen turns gray, there's like blood effects everywhere that can be dictated through inverse lerping. And that's it for today. Lerping is super useful to have in your tool belt. I use it almost every day. And I hope this explanation of lerping has helped you understand it better. If you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments below. And uh, yeah, that's it. See ya.